We'll figure it out. Right. Hi ho. Off we go. So, uh, very kind of quick drawing. from a reference photo that I've taken myself. Uh, the reason I'm doing uh, just a quick drawing is quite literally I've been struggling on my coursework quite a lot and I needed a physical break from it but I don't have time to like have a break break so I've kind of given a few minutes just to do something that I want to do so instead of looking at uh, people who I don't really like to study and things like that I can just take five ten minutes out just to get a drawing done that I'm that I want to draw I'm also slightly concerned that I'm gonna end up losing my style if that makes sense uh, because of my coursework it's having a detrimental impact on the way I feel about drawing so I just want to keep up the style and the way that I draw. Right. Just need to check my white balance. I just basically want to draw what I want to draw. I'm getting fed up of trying to draw things uh, that I don't enjoy drawing. Which is a bit of a task. But at the end of the day, I do appreciate that my course isn't just about drawing and writing and drawing and writing. It's uh, mentally challenging. So I've got to have the challenge side of things and I've got to overcome the hurdles of not enjoying drawing what they want me to draw. Oh, I need a sharpen pencil. Where are my pencil sharpener? Mm, that one's no good with a star pencil. I don't think that one is either. Oh well we'll see. No. Ah, oh, maybe. Actually, that's not too bad. I have to force a pencil in there, but oh, that's my problem. Right. I'll see. This isn't going to be like a neat drawing or anything like that. It's just me doodling. And um, by going over with the very light pencil, uh, still black pencil and all, it's just meant that I can now come in with the darker colour, well darker style, and put in the detail. I wish my computer screen wasn't quite so far away, not the easiest to see to. Right now. This one's got a kind of double bit. It was a um, show stallion, so he was being shown. And uh, they were wearing very particular bits. A lot of them had chains on because they were all getting very excited by the ladies.
horse lever is something that I really do need to practice more of. I need to study it a bit more as well. I'm not great at it. Not as in horse physical lever, but um, the bridles, tack and all of that stuff. I'm not great at it, so I need to practice that more. This is just a little quick sketch. Mm. Pencil sharpener that works, please. I'm going to go in and do another layer in a couple of minutes. Just want to roughed out bits. some white pencils and why is it the pencil that you actually want is never there when you want it what's this one that's ivory um this one might work quite sure i get the direction right I'll just bring the camera in a little bit actually. back to the black to pick up a little bit more detail it's 
kind of why I do like uh, doing freehand work. not really changing the pressure on the pen that much so pencil this much I know his ears probably a little bit too big. Um, not much I can do about that, but hey ho. But I can see it's a problem, so. That's Posca. Posca, Posca, Posca. Actually, I might be able to. Um, bear me. What's the noise? Just light off a few marks. Just pick out some of the highlights. Make sure I've got proper flow coming through. come back through with the black just to pick out a couple of little areas. And pick out a couple of little areas with the white pencil just to soften 
pockets and just put in a couple of highlights where they need to go. So I'll just spot it down. It's like faux pas there, so let's fix that. little highlight up here and this horse wasn't a black and white horse but just by using black and white pencils I should be able to pick out as much detail as I physically need I know these, the mains on these guys were absolutely amazing so I can re-pick that out make sure I've got the brightest highlights in the right places and there was a little bit of smudging on the nose put that in and back with the black just to sort out the year right now I've got a couple of mistakes A smudgy bit up on the nose. I can just use the black very very lightly just to break up uh, blocks of the white to indicate a little bit of tighter detail like so and there you go a uh, really simple quick freehand horse head Ta -da! Uh, actually, I'll just quickly soften up a tiny bit there. Whenever I step back and re-look at an image, I can quite often see things that suddenly I think, ooh, I need to amend that, or ooh, I definitely need to amend that. But uh, yeah, that is how I would, even in if I was drawing in the field and I had somebody stood with a horse in front of me, that's how I would quickly get down some detail. I mean, yeah, the, the ears slightly out, but uh, can, all things considering, the other proportions are quite well balanced, I feel. And sometimes uh, I just need to practice a little bit more on things like the ears. Let's see, just find another horse draw. Okay. 
So I'm going to sharpen pencils and then hopefully bring in another drawing onto the other part. Bear me, I just need to raise the camera up a little bit. So this is a different breed, but I'm going to try and incorporate it slightly. This time I can actually see the horse's eye, which is nice. It's not hiding. So what I'm doing is just very, very roughly mapping out each area. And this horse has its mouth slightly open because of the bit. Because I'm keeping the pencil light, I can change any parts that I want to. This horse had a bit of a funny um, dangly bit underneath its jaw. Very, very loose under the jaw. coursework has started to make me think about where I want to go with my artwork in the future. Uh, in all honesty right now I'm actually in two minds about continuing on with the degree. It's not that I want to quit it because at the end of the day I do really want that qualification but it's not actually allowing me to draw things that I enjoy drawing. Uh, and that puts me into a bad state of mind. Also, the criticism is not exactly constructive. It's very negatory. So uh, I don't really do that very well. Uh, that's it. I think he's done his math slightly too short, so I need to amend that. Chin's a bit too deep. Because this horse has got quite a different shaped head, it's quite a good challenge. Just quickly go and study it. Hmm. That's because he's got his teeth showing. Um, right. I've got the head slightly the wrong shape. I've got uh, too much of a dome. Some horses have kind of a dish to the, the lower forehead, especially more of the Arabian type horses. That feels better. Right, detail. This is the point where I'm kind of hoping that I've got everything in the right place. You'll notice I don't really do the blocking in of shapes or any of that. It's just a way that I'm more comfortable with. Not everything can be encapsulated 
in a square and a circle and all of that. Some shapes just won't comply. That should be today's word, encapsulate. Might use that at work tomorrow. That confused living socks off of a lot of people. <laughs> Nobody knows a nose like this horse knows its nose. And that's probably the most random thing you're going to hear for a while. Sure, I've definitely got to fix. Putty rubbers on this paper don't do too badly. Um, I mean, this is a slightly dry putty rubber. And that's why keeping the light hand is always quite essential. That's the thought. Oh, remember if you're drawing a uh, horse tack make sure that you've got uh, the little tiny ridge over the tops of the ends it's not a complete flat line when it end it gets to the top of the face there is a curve so you want to make sure that you indicate that this guy's got his jaw slightly dropped mouth isn't quite open but it's not closed either no, let's have a look at it that's it got it so there's the chain bit there You can probably see the difference from drawing the horse with more hair than face to the horse with more face than hair. So I'm taking a little bit longer on this one because there's a little bit more to the anatomy of the horse. If you're going to draw horses, make sure you do have a little look at all of the breeds. Don't just think that one generic face or body shape will suit every single uh, case. They don't. And if you're going to do portraits of horses, you need to be aware of this because you can't just do a portrait of any old horse and then say to someone, here's your horse's portrait. They will know the difference. You can't just wrap up all horses and say, that's a horse. In fact, I've done that a bit slightly too high. I can fix that. You can see I'm making a few more mistakes on this one. That's all part of the learning curve. It's because if he's got a funny, funny mane. So, I don't know who this horse's hairdresser was, but phew, they're not doing my hair, I tell you. Really, really weird. That's the hair actually starts there. They've been trimmed to quite an acute angle.
So I'll speed up a little bit as I'm just getting more confident with the marks that I'm making and the lines. I'll stop somewhere up here. I also do have um, some, I believe they've got the largest eyes of all mammals. That's where I've messed up slightly as I've done my eye too large. Once again, part of the learning curve. I can see where I've made mis uh, mistakes, so I hopefully can come along and fix them. This time, uh, let's try and this horse have white markings, so I'm going to put those straight in. But I'm not going all the way to kind of fill in the white markings. I'm going to leave some areas blank. Nice thing about these Posca pens is you can go back over them with the pencil. the white for the Posca, now onto the pencils. So this way I'm softening up those marks. And it'll take out the, the harshness and just help them blend in. I'm going to do, because uh, this was a very 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 light coloured horse, I'm going to use the white to just very lightly indicate uh, kind of skin coloration. sharpening up the black and coming through with a bit more detail. And then I can add in the shadow and such. So I'm using very, very light marks towards the end of the mane, just to indicate that it actually is getting lighter in colour.
need to change this bit. So you need and this bit needs to be tightened up a bit. Made a little bit of a mistake on the the size of the bit there. I wonder if I have got hmm. so I had a I was looking for a certain piece of equipment but it looks like it's done a runner. I really do need to put it on my desk. Uh, everything is literally doing a runner on this desk right now. Hmm. That's why your drawers are always on one side. Okay, um, well, there you go. Uh, two horse sketches. So you can see how quickly you can get down detail when drawing horses. That's two different breeds and slightly different styles. I've made mistakes on both drawings. Happy to say that. I've got no problem with saying that. And that way, that's how I'm learning. So I know where my mistakes are and I know how I can rectify them in the future. Naming observation, observation, observation. But for now, that's two very quick sketches, and I hope that's helped inspire you guys to have a go at drawing something different and challenging yourself. Freehand drawing can be easier than building up a drawing and mapping it out and all of that. So have a go at doing both methods. Try and draw a horse, say, by doing the square, the rectangle and the triangle and all of that and the diamonds and the circles and, you know, build it up from shapes. And then see if you can do a horse drawing just by drawing the horse itself and see how you do. Because uh, both ways you can learn a huge amount. So I hope this, like I say, has inspired you to have a go. And until next time, all the best and happy drawing to you all.